Hey friends, back here with you with another episode of the Pre-Ride Show brought to you by FSA. Pure Gravel Crew on the scene here in Emporia. We're just outside in the Flint Hills. I'm with my friend Isabel King. Izzy, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Um, as you can tell, we're not in California anymore. <laughs> we're here in Kansas. Um, you did a little pre-ride this morning. Uh, how are you feeling? What's your sense of uh, what's going on here? Yeah, I feel like uh, probably the opposite of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Like, definitely not in Los Angeles anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little more attractive, a little more rolling hills yeah. and greenery, I, I suspect. I like it. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I think mentally you have to get used to the like hills like this just long and forever being able to see you know everything that's ahead of you it's gonna be fun so anybody who might follow you on social media knows a couple things mm -hmm. we have a strong affinity for orange which we i do. do share with you i have some, big, do. I have some big orange roots <laughs> um you love long long challenging rides and going uphill I do. um let's start with the riding part yeah. you um immerse yourself into the scene in LA, which is not an easy scene to be part of and be in it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find that? Like, what, what was that first experience like of getting into that very um, a strong, challenging riding scene there in the West LA and Malibu area? Yeah, it's um, definitely not what I expected. I uh, grew up in San Francisco, which notoriously has kind of a beef with Southern California. So when I moved to Los Angeles for business school at UCLA, I came down there the day before school started and, and was expecting to find a lot of, you know, fake boobs and dietary restrictions and, you know, all Hollywood that you expect. And I discovered this incredible endurance community. Um, and I've been super thankful. Uh, it's definitely intimidating, uh, especially when you have all the pros, the Chris Room, you know, Payson came out, Colin came out, Kate Courtney came out to train this summer. Ah, I mean, yeah, winter. No, yeah. No big whoop. <laughs> um, so it's fun. You kind of get to go toe to toe with you know, the super fast people, which is um, a fun place to call your home. You came at cycling, though, as a reformed triathlete. I did. But even before that, a D1 soccer player. How did the soccer prepare your engine for triathlon and ultimately cycling? Yeah, I think um, I kind of fell into triathlon by mistake. I signed up just with a bunch of friends. Um, a lot I, of triathletes say yeah. that, though. You know, that's the thing. Um, I never really fit in. I always wore socks, so I feel like that was an original like red flag. Um, and then discovered mountain biking when I was in Los Angeles um, after I had kind of continued and I qualified to compete as a professional triathlete, and that was kind of the goal. Uh, but coming into 2020, once everything got canceled, um, I kind of shifted gears to focus on cycling, um, road and then off road as well, just because um, I want to kind of take my take a whack at this whole gravel thing. Um, a pretty intensive focus, I'd say, over the year we were shut down because you did quite a little bit of collecting of some QOMs. How many did you collect in that year? Uh, my Strava, you know, year in review was 1,180, I think. 1,180 <laughs> QOMs. I didn't know that there were that many hills around LA and she's collected virtually every one of them. Um, more race experience on the triathlon side though. Have mm -hmm. you done a lot of racing either on the road or on gravel or is this gonna be one of the first times we're really gonna crack the, crack the ball open here? For uh, they told, you know, they say start with the biggest possible race. So that was the strategy. Jumping into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was planning on doing rock cobbler as a kind of a warm up a few months ago. Um, and I got hit by a pickup truck two days before. Um, luckily I walked away relatively okay. The truck was totaled though. The truck was had a huge human sized dent yeah. in the side and my bike was cracked in half and I had like the tiniest little road rash which unclear how that happened <laughs> um, but I wasn't quite ready to race the next day so um, kind of mental prep um, I think I've kind of been training in a in a little quarantine bubble where I have a group of five ten guys that I train with most of the time um, and we just beat up on each other and so I've been super thankful to have them in the past year but with this race excited to to line up and and see where everything falls out. Do you have any expectations? Are you trying to come into this nice and clear and just kind of let the let the race play itself out? I think it's easy to kind of get wrapped up and be like, you want to you want to win or you want to make the front group and you blah, blah, blah. And you all the things that, um, you know, you kind of do when you get amped up for a race. But I think for me, uh, focusing on taking in this experience, like the only thing that's guaranteed is that you will win. I mean, will, you know, for yourself, learn a ton. So if you, if you go fast, you're out there for 12 hours. Uh, and I think in that 12 hour time, you go through some crazy ups and downs just mentally and, and being able to push through that physically and mentally. Um, the goal is to have a little bit of fun, probably type two fun, um, but also just kind of stay in the mix and see, see what I can do. 
That's fantastic. I know, I know you're going to do well. I think uh, you've got everybody pulling for you in terms of that. Uh, I think also, too, we have a mutual friend, um, and this mutual friend gave me a little bit of insight. Oh, gosh. I'm talking about Reggie Miller, <laughs> Hall, of Fame, Hall of Fame, NBA Hall of Famer Reggie Miller, who has become an avid cyclist, and you've been a bit of a mentor to him. Mm -hmm. um, he started out just loving riding bikes, and now he's racing Cat 1 mountain bike races and all over the gravel scene and things That's like awesome. that. Um, how's that experience been? What, how did you guys come to meet each other and, and what's that been like? Yeah, it's been such a fun kind of, both of us have grown so much in the past. I think we've known each other for two years now. Um, originally, it's pretty funny to look back, Reggie messaged me on Instagram and said, hey, you're riding right next to my house. Like we should go for a ride sometime. And at the time I was kind of like, <laughs> totally Reggie Miller, NBA all-star, like we should totally ride sometime. <laughs> um, but he actually, he was serious. And he said he was training for um, a hundred mile charity bike ride that he was doing. Um, and he was super nervous about riding on the road because he's fundamentally a mountain biker. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first time we rode, we rode for like six hours and it kind of proves the power of cycling where you can have two people that come from totally different backgrounds, but this weird hobby that we share brings you together. Um, we rode for six hours and you know, it was totally awesome. He says he has a unique, you have a unique way of making him laugh when he's deep, deep, deep in the cave. <laughs> Is that true? Is there anything um, I, there? I'm, I, are, you, are you writing circles around him no, as he's going up the hill? I don't think so. I think it's like kind of my entire approach to the cycling world. People take themselves super, super seriously. And so I try and always kind of like add a little bit of a goofball side of it. Because um, I think the moment that you take yourself too seriously, you're like, you're on a bike, you're wearing, you know, stretchy clothes and you're out there <laughs> like riding for hours on end, the moment that you take it too seriously, um, it kind of loses loses the glory or for the sure. fun for me. For sure. Well, he's doing great things now and he's, yeah. he's all trained up. He's working with USA Cycling on diversity, which is fantastic. Reggie, keep it up. We want to yeah. see you out here too. <laughs> um, obviously Unbound, what else is on your calendar? What are you looking forward to later on in the season as everything starts to open back up and we get back to racing here? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, as of now, I was looking at my calendar. I'm signed up for Crusher and the Tusher, which is, I think two major climbs. That one is a little bit more suited for the training that I do. But they're only about um, 45 miles long each, so yeah, it's a little fair. different. So yeah, um, so that one is, that'll be interesting. That one throws a high altitude. Um, BWR is kind of right in my backyard. Um, uh, yeah, that one um, kind of seems like more in my wheelhouse. You mix the road and the gravel, um, things like that. So that one I'm excited for. San Diego, um, just Sarah's last best ride in Montana. Um, I even looked at potentially Gravel World, um, which, this, you know, Unbound kind of feels like Gravel Worlds already. So it'll be interesting to see if I feel like I need to go do that after. Um, and then potentially talk to a few teams about guest riding on the road. Um, hilariously, I am deep Cat 5. Uh, I have done one Criterium Road Race, <laughs> which is pretty funny to line up with like the big hitters on this race um, as, you know, a very unexperienced road rider um, and probably even less on the gravel. <laughs> and so um, talking to those teams, you have to at least be a category two. Um, so I might have to mix in some hilarious local criteriums and things like that um, okay. just to get the points. Lap the field a couple times yeah. and just cat up. You can't crash if you're off the front. So that's what I've been told. That's a great <laughs> attitude to take. I love that. <laughs> Um, well, you're fantastic. We appreciate you coming out here in the, in literally in the middle yeah. of nowhere and chatting with us. A beautiful sunny day. We hope that weather holds out for you and that you have a real yeah. safe and, uh, and fun race on Saturday. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Pre-Ride Show sponsored by FSA. Make sure to click that subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That way you get notifications of all the new episodes that we drop. We'll see you next time. <laughs>